Well, I'm kind of reluctant to say this because I've been in the church world for the past 39 years. I've started churches. I've influenced the start of churches. I have helped friends start churches. I've got friends who are missionaries who started churches. I've traveled nationally and internationally speaking in churches. So I kind of run the risk of being ostracized here, but I'm seeing something and I've got to follow it. In the last few years, I've sought to join myself to a couple of different churches and they were awesome groups. I mean, the worship was awesome, the teaching was awesome, the people themselves were awesome and loving people. But inside, I had this sense that there was something different. Um, and finally, I was in worship one day and the Holy Spirit said, Are you done yet? And I said, I think so, but what do you mean? And then he said, This isn't what we're doing. Come on apart and we'll talk. Well, the idea of cathedralism that you asked about goes all the way back to the late 1960s and early 70s with the Jesus movement. That's where I came from. The term we used then was churchianity as opposed to what it seemed to us that Jesus was really all about. Back then, the harvest was in the streets. Ministry was in the parks and on the beaches and in house meetings and over fences and backyards and businesses and everywhere Holy Spirit guided people were. There was a spontaneous modeling of a streamlined outpouring that had nothing to do with traditional church modeling. Now, the hippies, we didn't know that much. So our method was share Jesus, tell our own conversion story, because we knew that part really well, and then pray for people. What we called it was putting God on them. And we would get people to let us pray for them even when they were antagonistic and said they absolutely didn't believe in Jesus. So our whole goal was to work towards that prayer time. And we would just say something like this. We'd say, Jesus, Gypsy Bob here, or whoever he was, or she was, Gypsy Bob here says he doesn't believe you're alive. And he doesn't think you exist, Jesus. So we just ask you to come right now and bathe him in your love and show Gypsy Bob how much you care and how real you are. I can't tell you how many times when we finished praying we'd look up and Gypsy Bob would have tears running down his cheeks and, and begging us to know what he had to do to be saved. It worked. When Jesus came and Jesus showed up, it worked. Well, then we were absorbed into the cathedrals, and that was pretty much that. We, we left our element, and we went inside, conformed, and a spontaneous, uncontrollable movement of the Holy Spirit died. Jesus, though, he loved those days. Well, Street Jesus and the Global Free Jesus Movement are a dramatic shift away from what I would call a let's go to church mentality toward a be church model of serving Jesus. It's a dramatic shift in concept that changes everything really. This isn't meant in any way to reflect an anti-church mentality because we believe in the multiplied power of believers associated together. To the contrary, it actually reflects what is a more dynamic and accurate replica of what it is to personally be an apprentice of Jesus and live in direct harmony with the Holy Spirit, acting out the expression of Christ right now, where you are, in your family, in your neighborhood, at your place of business, and all these things. It's Jesus out in the streets and out of the box. Pretty simple. Yes, we really do need to wrap up this segment. Um, but the go-to church paradigm was inherited during the Roman era of history. 
and then it was strengthened during the Dark Ages and is still lingering with us today. Look, the Jesus Apprentices, that's you and me, we are the only people who can bring the effect of his triumph over death and dying into the surrounding world. But in the go-to church model, the change agents, that's us, they're perpetually extracted out of the neighborhoods and spheres of influence and brought inside our control boxes that we have all come to call church. Inside the comfort of our control box, oh, we party down. Outside of our box, we're in very unfamiliar territory and for the most part, from what I've seen and experienced, freaked out. We're actually duped into thinking that going to our Jesus-in-a-box experience is serving God. But we aren't touching the lives of our own neighbors. In fact, a lot of people don't even know their neighbors' names. Then we think that the solution is to take the neighbors and drag them to the box, and then let the paid professionals talk to them, and the neighbors' lives will all become better then. Doesn't that strike anybody as absurd? <laughs>